All right, Shifting Shade, a 4-3 for 4, pretty bad stat line, uh, but a Death Rattle that copies a card from your opponent's deck and adds it to your hand. Uh, it's pretty appropriate that Amaz was the one who revealed this, because it's basically a Thought Steal effect, and uh, it's sort of, you have to imagine this is sort of like draw a card for its Death Rattle effect, and if you just have a 4-3 that drew a card, that's all right to begin with. That's a you know totally reasonable uh, uh, combination of stats and uh, and ability. Uh, obviously, it compares favorably to something like Gnomish Inventor, uh, but it's obviously better in a fatigue type game and worse at assembling combos. Uh, so it's more of just a an overall value style card. My thought is that just the stat line is a little bit too bad for this to be something that I'd want to play in a control deck, simply because it easily trades down with its three health. Uh, against uh, two drops and three drops. Uh, not Knife Juggler anymore, though, with the nerf. Um, so probably not a card that will see a ton of competitive play, but much like the Servant of Yogg-Saron, perhaps something that people will play in uh, decks that are looking to maximize their randomness. So Silithid Swarmer. Uh, this is a really interesting card, a 3-5-4-3. Three, three. Incredibly strong stat line, uh, but can only attack if your hero attacked this turn. Uh, that makes it fit particularly well with Rogue and Druid, uh, simply because those are the classes that have hero powers that allow their hero to attack. This can also fit in weapon classes like Warrior, Paladin, Hunter, Shaman, uh, but I think will be at its best in the classes that don't need to rely on drawing specific cards in order to enable it. Um, the fact that this can eat any 3-drop and can uh, survive actually combat with many 4-drops uh, makes it a card that I think is very attractive for a deck that's looking to play a control-oriented game um, that isn't necessarily trying to curve on the middle turns of the game. Um, so I, I can imagine very easily seeing this in uh, control-oriented rogue strategies in particular, um, simply because uh, it's just such a strong early play from a board control perspective, which is something that rogues typically lack. All right, Psychotron, a 3-4 Taunt Divine Shield, 4-5, uh, the corrupted version of a Noyotron, kind of funny in that way. Um, not super exciting to me. This is a card kind of like Sunwalker that uh, I think too much of its power is silenceable, though the, the nerf to uh, a lot of the silence cards does mean that it is uh, not as vulnerable as it once was because silences are less likely to be as popular. But... If, if a deck is really looking to uh, maximize either Taunt or Divine Shield minions, maybe they'll look at this, but probably not a card that sees a ton of play. So South Sea Squid Face, uh, another pirate. It's uh, pretty exciting to begin with, because the more pirates, the better for people who are looking to build those decks. Uh, with Death Rattle, give your weapon plus to attack. So 4 cost 4-4, four, four, pretty reasonable stat line, a little bit low, uh, but giving your weapon plus to attack is actually quite powerful. This is a deadly poison effect as the Death Rattle. So uh, I wouldn't be too surprised to actually see this card uh, show up if pirate decks are popular. Obviously having a pirate is pretty reasonable, but also just for the raw value you're getting from a free uh, deadly poison effect from the death rattle here. So uh, certainly an interesting card, and one of the cards that I think, if you look at, uh, definitely helps make the nerf to Blade Flare a little more understandable. Uh, it's much easier to print cards that actually buff your weapons when Blade Flurry isn't just the card they all have to be balanced around. All right, Squirming Tentacle, a 2-4 taunt for 3. Uh, kind of funny that the uh, the days of the poor uh, Silverback are further and further gone behind us. The 1-4 the taunt for 3, no longer the gold standard. We even had the, the Gnomish uh, Infantry, the 1-4 the, the charge taunt. Now we have a straight up 2-4 taunt for 3. Um, this I actually think is possibly a card that just seems like a uh, just a pile of stats with ability, but there aren't really that many great uh, taunt minions at three mana. Really, only uh, only Warrior has the Fierce Monkey as a three four taunt for three, which is an extremely strong card. Um, so I can definitely see this actually finding a home simply because there are decks that are looking for the ability to defend themselves early on, uh, and this is just a simple way to do it. Uh, not a particularly exciting card, but a card that definitely fills a role that uh, may be needed. Twilight Flame Caller, uh, pretty simple effect. It's a uh, arcane explosion on a body. Uh, arcane explosion, not a super popular card, but uh, I think that this is much more likely to actually see play simply because the the fail case of arcane explosion is that you have a card that basically does nothing. The fail case of this is that you have a card that basically gives you a two two for three, which isn't great, but. Playing a 2-2 two, two for 3 and killing all of your opponent's 1-1s one is also just extremely powerful uh, in the right matchup. So uh, this could definitely be a card that sees quite a bit of play uh, if 
decks that are looking to swarm the board are popular. All right, Twilight Geomancer, uh, one four taunt for two. Uh, good two drop taunts are actually something that we don't see all that often either. Uh, with Unstable Ghoul gone, uh, this is a, uh, a minion that might find a home just because people are looking for reasonable early taunt options. Uh, the fact that it is four health is actually pretty important. Uh, a lot of the, the taunts we've seen have had uh, three health at, uh, at two drop, things like the the bear cub from Druid or that unstable ghoul. Uh, this means that it actually survives both uh, an attack from a 3-2 minion as well as a hit from a fiery war axe. Uh, so actually just that stat line by itself I think is actually quite strong uh, in a lot of instances. Uh, the battle cry giving your Cthune taunt, kind of cute, <laughs> but uh, I don't know how often you're going to play Cthune and then necessarily really want it to be a taunt minion. I can imagine that that's actually potentially relevant if your opponent is going to kill you with charge minions or if somehow Cthulhu's battle cry leaves them with a board that threatens lethal. Uh, but I think the most important element of this card is much more likely to be just the fact that it's a strong taunt minion early in the game. All right, so Twisted Worgen, uh, not necessarily a super exciting card. 3-1 uh, stealth for two mana, obviously a twisted version of Worgen Infiltrator. I guess twisting in this case just made it bigger. Um, stealth is a powerful ability, uh, especially on a creature that hits relatively hard. So I could see this seeing play in aggressive decks uh, that are just looking to have minions that their opponent can't just kill right away. We have seen a reduction in power in charge minions, so it's possible we sort of see stealth minions take their place. Uh, as minions that are difficult for your opponent to deal with with their board, uh, and then you get to hit your opponent with them before they can deal with them. So uh, not necessarily an exciting card, but possibly a card that has a, a pretty meaningful impact on what decks look like uh, with the release of the new set. So Usher of Souls, uh, a 5-6 five, for 5, which is actually a strong stat line to begin with. Uh, this generally will eat most other things you'll play at 5 mana. Uh, six health is a pretty strong flashpoint against a lot of the things around that cost. The effect of giving your Cthune plus one plus one whenever a friendly minion dies, I don't know how important that will be, um, but just the stat line here alone is uh, is pretty impressive in terms of how it interacts with things around that cost. Zealous Initiate, uh, one one with death rattle, give a friendly minion plus one plus one. Not super exciting. Um, I don't know that we'll, uh, we'll, we'll necessarily see this guy showing up all that much. It could be a card that ends up being Pretty reasonable in a deck like Zoo that's looking to just exchange its minions in at a reasonable rate. Uh, a lot of the good death rattle cards like Haunted Creeper or Nerubian Egg that we saw before uh, are now gone in standard with the rotation of Next Ramos. Um, so this is a, a card that has some sort of positive effect if you were to throw it away with a Power Overwhelming or uh, Abusive Sergeant. But the base stats of just 1-1 one, one for 1 might just be a little too bad in order for it to really find a consistent home. Forbidden Ritual. Uh, this is the Warlock version of the Forbidden Cycle. Uh, this is actually kind of an interesting card in Warlock, uh, because even aggressive Warlock decks uh, typically have a game plan that involves uh, occasionally going fairly late in the game. Uh, and also, with buff effects like Power Overwhelming, uh, Warlocks can take advantage of having a significant number of small minions uh, that they can just sort of throw away and sacrifice. So uh, it's an interesting card uh, that may give Warlocks the ability to go wide uh, that they lost with the loss of Implosion in Standard. Twilight Darkmender. Uh, this is a pretty interesting card. Uh, it's a powerful stat-wise, just a 6-5 five, for 5, uh, just straight up. Uh, it's something we've actually seen a reasonable amount in this set when previously the sort of stat lines that we would see at 5 mana uh, would be generally 5-5. Five, five. Um, sort of topping out for many of the things. Uh, this is, you know, if your Cthune has at least 10 attack, you restore 10 health to your hero. It's a very powerful healing effect. Uh, Priest has a lot of powerful healing to begin with, um, but in many cases doesn't necessarily have the option of uh, great burst healing that doesn't cost them cards. Uh, We've seen Flash Heal, uh, Light of the Naru, things like that uh, are obviously powerful Priest cards, but even in many cases we'd see Priest decks using Antique Healbot, and uh, this is a card which obviously has a much better stat line than Antique Healbot, uh, and Self Heal also works very well with a deck that's looking to play a very long game, which Cthune decks typically will be. So I expect this will be a, a staple card in Priest Cthune decks moving forward. Uh, Light in the Darkness, discover a minion, give it plus one, plus one. Uh, it's kind of an interesting effect. Uh, it 
does obviously come with a significant tempo loss, uh, costs two mana in order to, to uh, play the spell up front. Uh, you get a little bit of that back from the bonus that you do give to the minion, uh, and it could potentially allow you to smooth out your curve if you do play this in the early game when you don't have a drop. Uh, in the late game, this can potentially represent the ability to find a big threat, though obviously there's a lot of minions in the game. Uh, this is kind of a weaker Raven Idol, I think, because Raven Idol obviously has the ability to find spells as well. Um, the buff that you get in the minion I don't think uh, outweighs the lack of... Uh, ability to fi find a spell like you get from Raven Idol, as well as just doubling the mana cost from 1 to 2. So, not a card that I expect to see a ton of competitive play. Divine Strength, uh, 1 cost spell, give a minion plus 1, plus 2. First of all, I think it's hilarious this is identical to Holy Strength from Magic the Gathering uh, in old, old sets back then. Um, so that's what actually stands out most to me about this, but uh, this is actually a fairly powerful effect, uh, buffing uh, 2 health for 1 mana. Uh, is obviously the effect of Power Shield, but instead of getting uh, the card, you get plus one attack. Uh, if you're playing a deck that's looking to uh, looking to have early trades, this can be a pretty strong tempo play, uh, giving you effectively this additional body and play that can eat your opponent's stuff. Uh, but unlike in Priest, uh, Paladin doesn't have the ability to actually heal its minions, so you don't have the ability to sustain your buffed minion like you do with Velen's Chosen or Powered Shield. And the fact that it costs you a card as compared to Powered Shield is a pretty big drawback. So uh, I think this is potentially a card that could be quite strong in Arena, uh, but expect that the investment is a little too much for competitive constructed play. All right, Feral Rage. Uh, choose one, give your hero plus four attack, or gain eight armor for three mana. Uh, this, I think, is uh, a better version of Bite. Uh, Bite gives you a, a 4 attack and uh, 4 armor for 4 mana. Uh, this basically lets you choose which one you want. If you're looking for survivability, uh, you can gain 8 armor for 3 mana, which is basically the healing touch effect, uh, though you can't use it to target a, uh, a minion like you can with healing touch. Uh, and Feral Rage, 4 attack for 3 mana is actually pretty good in terms of how it lines up with minions you might want to kill. Um, so, that said, I, I don't know that this is going to be as effective uh, as other options, just minion-based options or other spell-based removal options you have, uh, but the modality of it is obviously fairly powerful, and along with, say, Fandral Staghelm uh, could be an extremely powerful card. But uh, I don't think this is going to be a staple card, but may show up in, uh, in Staghelm decks uh, in competitive play. Uh, on the Hunt, uh, deal 1 damage, summon a 1-1 one, one Mastiff. Uh, this is a very powerful card for Hunter decks that are looking to kill small minions. Uh, being able to kill, say, an Abusive Sergeant or uh, Lepronome, even in its nerf state, uh, and actually get a body out of the deal is pretty strong, uh, especially for just 1 mana. Um, that said, this is a very difficult card to use proactively. Uh, it's basically just a 1-1 one, one for 1 that comes with 1 damage. Uh, basically an Elven Archer. Uh, as far as the effect of it in, uh, in most situations. So I, I don't really see Elven Archer, even if it is a beast, necessarily being something that's going to suddenly show up in constructed play. So Power Word Tentacles, uh, 5 cost, give a minion plus 2 plus 6. It's a pretty big buff, but if we compare this to Velen's Chosen, uh, which was an extremely strong priest card that was great as a tempo play, uh, you're only getting 2 additional health and no spell damage for 2 more mana. Uh, so, I think Velen's Chosen was uh, in a pretty good sweet spot as far as the effectiveness of it uh, from a tempo perspective, simply because you could play it uh, early on and sometimes even heal the minion after attacking in with it to trade up, whereas this, at 5 cost, is rarely going to be a powerful tempo play uh, and doesn't have nearly the effectiveness of Velen's Chosen at buffing things uh, like Holy Nova to kill patrons, stuff like that. So uh, I think this might be a fairly strong uh, arena card simply because buffing creatures to very high health can make them very difficult to remove when players don't have as much removal effects like they do in Constructed, uh, but I don't expect this to see competitive play. All right, Primal Fusion. Uh, give a minion plus one plus one for each of your totems. This is another in these one cost spells that we're seeing uh, kind of a cycle of in this set. Um, this is a, a strong effect if you do have a bunch of totems, uh, but you need to have a bunch of totems before it does anything, which means the fact that it costs one kind of loses a little bit of its luster. So uh, maybe there's going to be some sort of dedicated totem deck with Totem Carver and uh, Tuskar Totemic and this card, but I would be pretty surprised if that showed up in competitive constructed play.
All right, Shadow Strike. Deal five damage to an undamaged character for three mana. I think this is a, a quite a powerful card uh, for rogues. It's kind of like the, the powered up backstab. Um, this is actually a very strong tempo removal effect for minions up to uh, even five mana. We see lots of uh, five health minions there. Being able to kill that for three mana is, uh, is quite strong. Uh, obviously has the same restriction as backstab, can't kill uh, minions that have already taken damage. But uh, I think that, that we may see this as a removal option for mid-range uh, rogue decks moving forward. All right, Shatter, uh, destroy a frozen minion. This is a pretty cool card uh, because it is a ability to kill anything. You know, it's not a conditional removal effect, except, of course, the minion needs to be frozen. Um, obviously, there are lots of tools in the uh, mage repertoire that allow us to do this. Uh, in particular, the new Demented Frost Collar works extremely well with Shatter. Uh, so I, I don't know that we'll necessarily see this show up in a lot of, uh, of mage decks, but I can imagine people building sort of freeze-focused uh, mage decks. Not necessarily the freeze mage style, but uh, with Demented Frost Collar, Water Elemental, Shatters, you can end up having a pretty powerful control over uh, any opponent who uses a uh, weapon-based strategy or individual large minions. As to whether that's potentially a better way to use freezing than uh, actual freeze mage, just burst your opponent down, Probably not. Stormcrack. Uh, two cost, deal four damage to minion with overload one. Uh, this doesn't really excite me very much. Uh, I did never really liked using Crackle as removal for minions, and Crackle basically did the same thing as this, but could also go face. Uh, so Stormcrack is a card that probably doesn't really have the the power that it will take to see constructed play, unless for some reason there is a high density of four health minions that need to be removed, and Lightning Bolt just can't get the job done. All right, Aberrant Berserker, clearly the uh, corrupted version of Armani Berserker, um, a four cost, three, five, and a rage plus two attack. Pretty simple card, unlikely to really have what it takes to see constructed play. Uh, just kind of a uh, an ode to an old card from the classic set. Uh, speaking of odes to old cards, the Amgam Razor, 1-5. Uh, uh, the flavor text in this is uh, uh, Power Creep Backwards, much like this is Magma Razor Backwards. So pretty uh, pretty amusing call out to the community here. Obviously not a powerful card, uh, not going to see any competitive play, but certainly a funny reference to uh, Magma Razor and all the rage surrounding it. So Biofin Tidehunter, a 2-1 Murloc for 1... Uh, the all right, Bilefin Tidehunter, a 2-1 Murloc for 2 uh, with Battle Cry 7 and a 1-1 Ooze with Taunt. This is pretty interesting because uh, one of the problems with Murloc decks is often the ability to actually keep your Murlocs in play long enough to gain an advantage from their synergy effects. Uh, this actually giving you a Taunt Ooze uh, could potentially protect your Murlocs on the board. Uh, and turn two into turn three is the perfect timing for that because turn three is when you have the ability to play Murloc Warleader. So uh, I think this actually could be a very strong card for Murloc decks simply because it can actually keep their Murlocs alive in the early game. So Bladed Cultist, a one cost, one two with combo, get plus one plus one. This is kind of like the uh, zombie chow for rogue decks here. Uh, if you have a little bit of an extra investment combo, uh, you can get a great early statted minion that, uh, well, in, in the case of uh, this compared to Zombie Chow, can actually be aggressive as well. Uh, so I, I actually think that this could potentially be a very strong card for rogue decks, uh, both as an early control tool as well as just as a uh, ability to fight for the board and threaten your opponent, since unlike Zombie Chow, it doesn't actually give your opponent life back when it dies. Uh, this is a great stat line for the cost. Uh, though, to be fair, the fact that you need to invest the ability to play, have played another card already uh, means that it's not nearly as reliable as Zombie Chow in containing opposing early aggression. So this, in a way, kind of costs a bit more than one mana uh, because you have to have actually played something else as well that turn. Uh, being able to coin out two of these in the first turn, however, uh, could certainly be extremely powerful. But uh, this is, I think, a, a powerful card for rogues to actually be able to play a board control game very early on, and I do expect it to see constructed play. So Bloodhoof Brave, a four cost, two six taunt with enraged plus three attack. Uh, this is actually a really strong stat line. 
Uh, six health for four mana on a taunt minion uh, is very difficult to get through and will often require two attacks, which makes the enrage effect on it uh, actually a lot more impactful because it's going to be very, uh, very rare that your opponent will be able to actually just punch through it with a, a single hit. Uh, so this is actually, I think, a very strong card for warrior decks. Uh, that gives them a, a tool for strong early game interaction that's not necessarily weapon based. So I would certainly not be surprised to see this show up in competitive play. So Bog Creeper, the uh, older brother of Fen Creeper, clearly has gotten out of the uh, out of the Fen there with the the gnome on its back. Uh, a seven cost six eight taunt. What is relevant about this is it offers a big taunt minion uh, late in the game to anyone who wants it. Previously, uh, it was pretty difficult to find a reasonable big taunt minion outside of Druid uh, or specific classes with things like Tyrion or whatever else. Uh, but this is a, a, a minion with just a totally reasonable stat line. You know, six, eight taunt for seven and was actually gonna keep you alive through a lot of different things. Uh, so if someone's looking to play a late game defensively oriented deck, this is actually a tool that very well might show up even though it's a very, very simple card. So. Super simple card here, Carrion Grub, just a 2-5 beast for 3 mana. Uh, Hunters actually really have uh, have wanted uh, resilient beasts at the 3 cost slot for a while, thanks to Houndmaster, having, uh, having a minion that's difficult for your opponent to remove before you're able to play Houndmaster to buff it. Uh, is a really big deal for mid-range hunter strategies. So I actually would be uh, not at all surprised uh, to see Carrion Grub showing up quite a bit uh, in mid-range hunter decks in competitive play. So Dark Arakoa, uh, six cost, five, seven taunt. Most of the, the, the taunt minions we see uh, don't really have stats that really compare to that at six mana. The, the, the best uh, comparison is uh, probably Sunwalker, which is just a 4-5 Divine Shield taunt. Uh, this is getting plus one attack and uh, plus two health uh, for the, the lack of the Divine Shield and a Cthune effect. Uh, I can actually see this seeing play outside of Cthune deck simply because a 5-7 taunt uh, for six mana is pretty attractive. Uh, we, we've even seen Master Jouster show up in a lot of late game uh, Druid decks simply because they're so uh, interested in just having those taunts on those turns. And this is guaranteed to be a taunt, unlike the Jousters. So uh, I can certainly see this see play not only in Cthune decks, but potentially in other decks as well. So Darkshire Alchemist, Battlecry, Restore 5 Health, 5 cost, 4 5. Not a tremendous stat line. This is a lot like the, uh, the Naga Healer. Um, but restoring 5 health, not only to yourself, but also to a minion, uh, is a pretty powerful battle cry effect. Um, that said, the stat line on this is pretty unimpressive. It doesn't compare very well uh, to other things at its cost, so I would not be, uh, be uh, expecting this to see a lot of competitive constructed play. So Darkshire Councilman, uh, after you summon a minion, gain plus 1 attack, a 1-5 for 3. Uh, this is a powerful card with anything that generates multiple minions. Uh, for instance, if this exists in a format alongside Implosion, uh, you could certainly see uh, a player casting this in turn three, casting Implosion in turn four, and uh, suddenly having a big difficult to deal with threat in addition to all of those imps. So uh, Warlock is a class that does have the ability to spawn a bunch of stuff thanks to just drawing a bunch of cards with this hero power uh, or things like Forbidden Ritual. So I would not be surprised to see this show up in a board Flood style Warlock deck uh, as a powerful individual threat. So Dusk Boar, a 4-1 beast for two. Not a super impressive stat line. It is, it is a very, very hard hitting minion, but dies to basically anything. Um, it is a beast, so maybe it shows up in beast synergy decks like Hunter or uh, in Druid, but the fact that it is a two-cost minion that dies to many hero powers uh, is something that may make it difficult for it to show up a lot in competitive constructed play. Uh, so here we have just super simple card, eight cost, six ten Eldritch Horror. Uh, nothing much to say about this, just a big body showcasing uh, the various huge monsters the old gods control. Probably not going to show up anywhere in constructed play, but definitely a big threat in arena. The evolved kobold, uh, four cost, two two with spell damage plus two, basically double the power of a kobold geomancer. Spell damage plus two isn't something we've actually seen very much at all. The only cards that have given been multiple spell damage prior to this have been uh, Malagos and Jungle Moonkin. So having an individual common card giving plus two spell damage without a drawback, uh, other than of course being a two two for four, is interesting. 
Um, I can imagine seeing this in uh, decks with lots of AoE effects, things like Fan of Knives or uh, Blizzard, things like that, but I don't necessarily think that the, the power you're getting from this is really worth the fragility of the minion uh, in, in a normal uh, spell damage based deck. So probably not a card that will see a ton of competitive constructed play unless there are lots of uh, Moonfire style of decks that, uh, that end up jumping up out there. All right, Faceless Behemoth, another just vanilla monster, gigantic, 10 cost, 10-10. Uh, again, not something that I expect to see competitive constructed play at all, but just showcasing how monstrous these Servants of the Old Gods really are. So Faceless Summoner, this is a really powerful card, I think. Uh, a six cost, five, five, not great stat line by itself. But with a battle cry of summoning a random three cost minion, you're getting a, a very good deal as far as the mana worth of stats that you're putting on the board, uh, in addition to having it split across multiple bodies. So uh, it's a bit surprising to me to see this as a common card, simply because it's a very, very powerful effect in arena play. Uh, and I think it may even be good enough to show up in Constructed uh, if people are actually playing proactive mage strategies. So uh, this is a card that is certainly quite powerful and I expect to see quite a bit uh, in the future. So Fiery Bat, the, the homage to uh, world champion Fire Bat here. Uh, a 2-1 for one mana with a death rattle, deal one damage to a random enemy. Um, this is a reasonably, reasonably powerful uh, just beast as it is, just a 2-1 one for 1, totally reasonable stat line. Uh, the Death Rattle makes it very effective uh, in minion versus minion combat. Uh, if you're playing against other decks that have 1 health minions, that's where this is going to be at its best. Uh, it's going to get a little bit of extra damage in against opponents who are playing uh, creature light decks because they kill it and then take 1 more damage. So it's Get kind of getting a little bit of a bonus, not quite Lepernome level, but the fact that it can kill opposing minions as well, uh, and has the bonus of getting beast synergies, I think uh, makes it quite an attractive minion in uh, aggressive decks. So Flame Wreath Faceless, a 4 cost 7-7 seven, seven with Overload 2. Uh, this is a much more powerful card uh, with Big Game Hunter having been changed to 5 mana. Uh, Previous to uh, that, to that change, I would have looked at this card and said, "Nope, dies to big game hunter. You know, you're just gonna just gonna play it out there and be sad." But now, uh, this is a card that is pretty attractive for any kind of uh, aggressive shaman deck. Being able to play out a huge minion that can dominate the board in the early game uh, is very very attractive. So, uh, I actually think that this is a card that has a very good chance of seeing competitive constructed play uh, and may by itself. Uh, drive people to play more cards like Elder Peacekeeper, uh, perhaps even more saps in rogues decks, things like that. Grotesque Dragonhawk. This is obviously the uh, the young Dragonhawk having grown up with tentacles all over it. 5-5 uh, five, five Wind Fury for 7 mana. Not really a constructed, uh, constructed all-star by any means, but certainly very scary if it ever survives. Uh, I expect this to be a card that uh, terrifies players whenever it hits the board in Arena, uh, but probably not do all that much else. So Hooded Acolyte, uh, whenever a character is healed, give your Cthune plus one, plus one. Uh, this is a three, six for four, which is a pretty strong stat line. Um, but the ability is, I think, not quite impactful enough uh, to really stand out compared to things like Holy Champion, uh, as far as options you'd be looking for for this trigger effect. So it doesn't really seem like an effect that is worth investing all that much mana in, even in a deck that is looking to build a big Cthune. Uh, that said, it's possible to get a lot of triggers with this, with cards like uh, Holy Nova or Circle of Healing, and maybe if games do go on long enough, just using your hero power with this to buff your Cthune repeatedly uh, can end up having a big impact. But my inclination is that this effect is not really worth investing much in, uh, though the fact that it does come with a powerful body attached uh, may help balance that out. Uh, Nerubian Prophet, uh, 6 cost, 4-4 four, four. at the start of your turn, reduce the card's cost by 1. Uh, this is a weird card because it's basically only ever good if it's in your opening hand. Uh, if you keep it in your opening hand, you end up having a, uh, a very, very efficient minion uh, a couple turns into the game, but when you draw this late in the game, it's, it's quite, quite weak. So, uh, for that reason, I would expect we probably won't see this much in competitive constructed play, uh, simply because when you are getting a good deal out of it, it's not that good, and when it uh, doesn't show up in your opening hand, it's quite, quite bad. 
All right, thank you guys very much for watching. That is it for my review of Whispers of the Old Gods. Uh, I'm sure I will be back with much more to talk about about the new set once it's actually released and I've had a chance to play with the cards. Uh, so be sure to come back and check out all the new content, which will be showcasing all of this cool new stuff that we get a chance to play with. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.